Welcome to another episode of Old Line Watches. With you as always is me, Jeremy, your old man from the Old Line State of Maryland. Today, we are going to be doing a review of a little bit of an oddity. It's going to be the Ball Inspector, and I'm going to go through this entire video without making one joke about it. Watch it. All right, but before we get started, I want to do a quick shout out to subscribers Maximus, Otis, and U5FB. Hopping into a wrist check, it's a Seiko SKX173, the 007's lesser known brother just for the American market. Big difference being the rectangular indices instead of the round ones. Otherwise, it is just an SKX007. Oh, and it's on a nice little engineer from Straps Co. Nice quality, good folks. They aren't paying me. No one's paying me. No one's paying me at all. Be sure to check the description for a link to the uh, ball watch we're reviewing along with any other coupon codes or affiliate links that I can find and present and share with you. Let's turn that camera around and take a look at this ball. Now this is the part of the video where I would have uh, videos of old-timey choo-choo trains and other stuff to do a little voiceover about the history of ball watches. Um, started sometime in 18-something-something -something, uh, when they needed railroad clocks to be a lot more accurate than they were because people were getting in accidents because they weren't on the right tracks at the right time. Ball watches came around with a super accurate one and saved a whole lot of lives and a whole lot of money. And everyone loved them forever. The end. All right, today we're looking at an NM1021D-S1-WH. This is called the Inspector, and it's weird, as you can see. But it's, I really like it. I really, really, I, I don't know, in spite of it or because of it, I love it. All right, let's get some, some basic specs here. It's 35.3 diameter, well, not really diameter. Diameter is used for circle, so I guess it's just width. A uh, lug to lug of, well, we're measuring it. Yeah, lug to lug is 42, and end link to end link is 48 and a half. It is got 13 mil lug width because it's not quite integrated, but well, you ain't popping those spring bars and putting something else in there either, so it might as well be integrated. It is nine and a half mil thick and sized up for my six and three quarter inch wrist. It is a svelte 137 grams. She is powered by a quartz I don't know because there's almost no information available on this thing. I think they just kind of put it out, no one bought it, and they buried it quickly. Got a cool square case, as you've probably noticed. The bezel, so to speak, is polished, even though it's all sorts of in need of a Cape, Cla Cape Cod cloth. Uh, the rest of the case is a really, really fine, fine brushing. It's uh, almost too fine to see. It's really, really well done there. The sides are also polished. We've got a signed push-pull crown. We've got a case back with the double R logo again, as well as the you know, ball watch company, anti-shock, anti-glare sapphire. I don't know if that means that's AR or just a feature there, so to speak, because uh, look at that sapphire. That is a curved sapphire crystal. It's got some pretty awesome distortion there you can kind of see all right on to the bracelet which is another work of art or awful depending on your perspective of things we've got kind of an h style linking with with the h's being in a fine brush and the squares in between them being in a polish in desperately need of some more polishing as you can see again they're pretty scratched up and fingerprinted say Nicely, really nicely made butterfly clasp with the boop, the double R signature again. Looking really, really good. Let's give a little attention to this dial. It is trippy. It's got kind of a 
spider webby radiant thing going on there the pattern on the dial itself we've got batons all the way around at every hour marker even the 12 3 6 and 9 we got a little date over at the 430 there uh, feels kind of afterthoughty but it's there and it's not ugly or inappropriate got the uh, ball official standard quartz anti-shock 50 meters water resistant this is our loom shot sort of because there's no loom in this puppy it is powered by tritium which means it's going to glow like this for many many more years before it starts to really fade it's not like the brightest in the world but it's just never going to stop glowing this is the part where i would put it on a time grapher but uh no just take a moment and I really appreciate that dial again, because it's just silly. And this here is part of the reason I like it so much. It just fits really, really nicely. Look at that down the wrist shot. Curvy. It hugs your wrist like mama's embrace. Oh, yeah. Absolutely fantastic. It just feels really, really nice. Honestly, the only bad thing I can say about it is the best thing about it, that dial. It's kind of hard to read under a lot of light circumstances. Not from any glare on the crystal, because that is, I mean, you can see that from any angle at all. But the, it's 9 o'clock, and it's kind of hard to tell just because that design is so distracting almost. And the uh, second hand isn't quite on the mark. Oh, it's just like a millimeter off. It's so close. It would be perfect. But yeah, that's about the only bad things I could say about it other than, well, some people think this is astonishingly ugly. And they're not entirely wrong, but I just think it's so pretty. So that was the Ball Explorer. Uh, Kind of an oddity, difficult one to find. I don't know if I'd call it rare so much as unwanted, but I like it. I really like it. Uh, it took me a while to warm up to it. I will admit that. I was like ready to get rid of it when I first got it. And I just, every time I put it on, I just liked it more and more. And now, now I love it. So until next time, this has been Jeremy, your old man from the old line state, signing off. <laughs>